Guilt is the feeling that you get when you do something that you should not have done. Guilt often accompanies shame. So guilt and shame. Th these are negative feelings just like bitterness, envy, anger. So kanin mga dili na maayo na mga emotions. You know, nobody need to tell you that what you are doing is wrong. Because God has given us our conscience. Our conscience will bother us if we do something that is not right. So our conscience is our moral compass. It gives us the sense of right or wrong. Guilt could be a problem because too much guilt could lead to depression. Okay? It could lead to worry, anxiety. And, you know, people deal with guilt differently. Ang um, tao, they will just ignore it. Okay? They will just deny it, deny their conscience. Ah, wala akong magugibuhat na dautan. They will just deny it. Some people will just um, ignore it. Some people will just uh, dead, deaden deaden or patyo nila ang ilang, ilang conscience. That's why we see people na mag go into drugs or mag-inom para malimtan ang ilang mga ipangbate. And then na po yung mga laing tao na they will just compensate or they will just pay their guilty conscience by doing good. Let's say they have done bad in their life before, so gikuan nila para, para di sila mag-guilty kaayo they will just pay or do something good to pay for the bad that they have done. And sometimes we try to forget yung mga yung nagbabother sa ato na guilty conscience. I'm sure all of us have done something in our lives na, na parang we regret our action na nagmahay ta and then um, sometimes these past mistakes naghatag sa ato og mga guilty conscience. And some of us may have unresolved guilt in our lives na sige na itong mabalik-balik ang nakaraan. Or maybe you have known someone na, na they have backslided from the Lord, na nilayo na sa ginoo. Kay usually, a Christian who has done something wrong, the Lord will convict them of what they're doing. And ang usahayang buhaton, para sa mga backslide, pag mag-backslide, dili nila, ibaliwala nila ang prompting ng mga conviction ng Holy Spirit. Or you know somebody who has run away from God. So this message uh, is for you. So this morning, we're going to look at the Bible. So we're con going to continue the, the, our study on the life of Joseph. So this morning, we'll try to learn how God deals with us when it comes to uh, our guilty conscience. How God uses our conscience to talk to us and we will learn how to deal with guilt. Okay, as a recap, sa mga wala pa na kay Balo, we've been talking about the life of Joseph. Isa man si Joseph. Joseph is one of the 12 sons of Jacob and then he's the favorite son of Jacob. And nasuya ang iyang mag isoon mao gibaligya si Joseph, si Jose, sa uh, mga slave merchants, and then gidala si Jose sa Egypt, kung asa siya na assign kay Potiphar. So nagtrabaho siya, isip slave ni Potiphar, and then gipromote siya ng ginoo, naghimo siyang administri administrador sa balay ni Potiphar. Pero, gitintal siya ng asawa ni Potiphar. So, Mrs. Potiphar, a desperate housewife, tried to seduce Joseph to go to bed with him. Wala siya nisugot. And then, nidagan siya. And then, the wife cried rape. And then, gipapriso si Joseph. And we learned that in prison, uh, Joseph met the chief cup baker and the chief cup bearer. And then, nasa yung mga damgo and then, gi-interpret ni Joseph and then, usa dito, nakalaya ang usa, gipatay. But nonetheless, kalimtan si Joseph. And after two years, 
nagdamgo ang hari and then nang naninghang lang ng hari og interpreter gitawag si Joseph and un- after that uh, nag inter- ang interpretation Joseph that there will be seven years of famine uh, I mean seven years of plenty first and then afterwards seven years of famine and then gi promote siya ng hari ni Pharaoh para mahimong uh, second in command all over Egypt and then so this is now the continuation of our story we are now in Genesis chapter 42 so remember our question is how does God deal with people who have gone so far from him so in Genesis chapter 42 verse 1 when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, nung nakahibalo si Jacob na may mga gibaligya na pagkaon sa Egypto, giingnan niya ang iyang mga anak, mga lalaki, why do you just keep looking at each other? I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. So the Bible did not tell us what the brothers were feeling after they sold Joseph. They have done something wrong. And how did God try to talk at, try to reveal himself to them? So, makita nato dere, chapter 42, verse 1, that God awakened our deadened conscience by making us needy. Sometimes, God sends famine in our lives and He makes us empty. He makes us empty para ma-realize nato that we need Him. This is especially true sa mga nag-backslide sa ginoo. You will feel the emptiness. You will have a famine in your life that you will feel that you need the Lord. And that is how God speaks to me. Kasi na may mga times na magkasala ko and then malayo ko sa ginoo, and the Lord will make me feel empty. The Lord will make me feel that there is a famine in my life. There is a thirst, there is a hunger in my life. And that is the time when our conscience will kick in and reminding us that we have done something wrong. Kasi sometimes kung, kung makasala ta, di ba ang usahay ang buhato na to, we will fight our conscience. Do you? We will say, ah, wala na to, wala na to. We try to forget the wrong that we have done. But, you know, the Lord is not yet done with us. Even though na nag-backslide ta or nagbuhat ta sa iyo, the Lord will use circumstances to remind us. And that is how God reminded the brothers of Joseph na nasa ligibuhat na sa iyo because of that famine. And then, nakabutang sa verse 3, Sabi ni Jacob, I heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy grain for us. And then, ang sige buhat mag They were just looking at each other. Why? Because Egypt reminds them of something. It reminded them of Joseph because they sold Joseph to traders in Egypt. So, kana ang trigger point? The Lord will let us remember na nate gibuhat and ngano nalayo ta sa Ginoo so the, sometimes the lord will remind us of our need okay and that is how the lord reminded joseph's brother do, do you remember the story of the prodigal son gibaligya niya ang ang iyang mga inheritance sa iyang amahan then ni adto sa salain lugar nag-enjoy siya nung nag-enjoy siya gihuna-huna ba niya ang Ginoo wala it is the time when he had nothing gutom na kay siya nagtrabaho siya sa usa ka farmer and then what he did, he was feeding pigs. And sa iyang kagutom, na hinunduman niya, in my father's house, they have food for the pigs. At least, mas maay pa dito, balik ko sa ginoo. So in other words, the, the Lord used the hunger of the prodigal son to remind him of God. And in the same way, the Lord used the famine as a way to remind the brothers of Joseph of what they did to Joseph because the Lord is trying to restore them. So ito yung turning point. Okay, turning point. So na situation na you will feel empty in your life. And 
That is God's way of calling our attention. And that is God's way of knocking at the door of our heart, trying to bring us back. And then makita nato sa verse 6, Joseph was the governor of the land. Siya ang tigbaligya sa mga pagkaon sa mga tao. Then, miabot ang mga igsoon ni Joseph, and then they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. And as soon as Joseph saw yung brothers nila, nailhan niya yung mga igsoon niya. Pero, he pretended that he was a stranger. Wala siya nagpahibalo na nailhan din niya ang iyang igsoon. Pero ang iyang mag-igsoon, wala nakailan niya. And Joseph spoke harshly against the brothers. Sabi niya, where do you come from? Ang tubag sa igsoon ni Jose, taga kanaan kami. Ugmianhi kami dinhi aron mo palit og pagkaon and then wala nakaila ang igsuon ni Jose kang Jose and then because of that Joseph remembered his dreams and Joseph said to them you are spies you have come to see where our land is protected so makita ninyo ang mga igsuon ni Jose ni Yukbo kang Jose and Jose remembered his dream di ba ang iyang damgo is that his sheaves rose and then the sheaves of his brothers bowed down to him. So in other words, na-fulfill good ang iyang damgo, ang iyang mga igsoon ni Yukbo kaniya. And, and then, you know, when Joseph saw his brothers, I'm sure na-remind po siya ang gibuhat sa iyang mga igsoon. For all of, the, all of those years, he tried to forget because God helps him forget. But karon na na yung igsoon, na-remind na po siya sa gibuhat sa mga igsoon. Pero ang mga igsoon niya, wala na kailan niya. Kaya nga naman, siguro more than 10, 20 years have passed. So na, siguro nilahi na tsura ni Jose, kay 17 years old man siya that time. And probably, siguro si Jose, nag-dress up siya as an Egyptian. So, di ba? Kalbo, clean shave sila. And then napo siya mga sanina na dili na gud siya mailhan. And Joseph, gipasaning lang sila mga spies. You know, during those times, that's how military conquers another country. So magpadala sila spies. And at other times, Egypt, they are very rich because they have so many food. And then mahadlok po sila na yung mga tagalang nasod na mo ato sa ilaha para mo kuha sa ilang mga pagkaon. And then the Egyptians at that time, they do not trust the people in Canaan. So ang, ang, ang reaction ni Jose, makita na inana ang sentiment mga Egyptian. Wala sila salig sa mga Canaanites. So sa inyo siya, kamo mga spies mo. Nag-reason out mga isuon nila, Dili sir, dili kami mga espiya. Mi anhi kami, araw mo palit o pagkaon. Niingon si Jose, ah, di kumutuon ninyo. Niya tumadere, aron, mahibawan, unsay ang huyang sa depensa sa among nasod. And then the brothers explained that kami, dose mi mga igsoon, and the youngest is with our father, and one of them is no more. Ang ilang pasabot si Joseph, wala na. And then, in, dito bag si Jose, so gisulayan ni Jose, ang ngayang mga igsoon. Ingon siya, kamo, mga espiya mo. And then, ingon siya, dili mo pwede makahawa ka ni lugar unless dalon ninyo ang yung youngest brother para mahibaan yun na ako kung tinuod ba ang inyong gisulte. I will test if you are telling the truth. In the meantime, I will not let you go. So, gibuhat ni Jose, gib, gipriso sila. So, hindi lang natin makita sa passage, nga nang gibuhat po ni Jose, ang iyang gibuhat. Ang sabi, motive niya. Gibuhat ba niya kay nalagot siya yung mga igsoon? Gusto niya i-punish ang iyong mga igsoon? Or was it because Joseph was trying to test his brothers to see if they have changed? And I think, kanagod ang iyong purpose. Gusto na sulayan ang iyong igsoon. Para may baon, nag- nag-usab ba sila after 20 years? And then, gibutang po, gipriso niya ang igsoon for three days. Siguro, during that time, Joseph was confused. And yung brothers, they were also confused. Okay, let's talk about the point of view of the brothers. Kung ikaw, isa sa maigsoon ni Jose, ang sabi mong mabate, I'm sure you're, you'll be confused. Nga nang gipriso man, may dere, wala man may gibuhat na sayo. And during those three days, the Lord reminded them of what they did. God sends pain to these brothers. Parang feeling na there's an injustice, di ba? Kikipriso man sila. But you know, God uses injustice to call our attention. Just like God calls the attention of the brothers. Kasi for how many years, they have not yet dealt 
They have not yet dealt with their guilt. Sa ilang gibuhat, sa ilang igsoon. God reminds us of the bad things that we have done for the purpose of restoring us. And it's up to us kung magrepenta o dili. So in verse 18, makita na to, after three days, gitawag ni Jose ang iyong igsoon. Sabi na, okay, since I fear God, this is what you should do. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here and then uban mo uli and then dalon ninyo ang inyong youngest brother para ma-verify na ako ang inyong sinultian. Then the brothers were talking to each other. Sabi niya, surely we are being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us for his life. But we would not listen. That's why this distress has come on us. Ang inyong ni Ruben, dili bagi ing nan kuman ka mo kani Anton nga dili ninyo pasidpadan ang bata. Apan wala gayod ka mo, namati ka na ako. Busa, gipaninglan na kita karon sa iyang kamatayon. Feeling niya, God is letting these things happen para ipanish sila. I think this is a normal reaction to us. Usahin mang God, if there are bad things that happen to our lives, we will try to evaluate. Ano nahita buo man eh? Is God punishing me? Is God... Is, is, do I have an unconfessed sin? Kabantay mo, Ana. Sometimes when bad things happen, you begin to make an evaluation. Kasi kung life is smooth, wala kay incentive para mag-self-reflect. But when God sends us trial, sends us pain, or injustice, just like what happened to the brothers of Joseph, wa mo sila kasabot nga no, gipriso sila. And then nagunaw na sila siguro, gipaninglan na tanang ginoo. Agi sa atong gibuhat, kang Jose. So they, have, they, they were bothered by the guilty conscience. Giba, na bother sila. God is using the hard circumstances in our life to remind us that perhaps we have some unconfessed sins. So, God is trying to remind us to steer our conscience para mubalik ta kaniya. You know, etong mga kasakit, mga problema, kasakit, this could be God's messenger to bring us into repentance. Pwede gamito ng ginoo kanin mga kalisod nato to remind us perhaps nato yung mga gibuhat na dapat nato i-confess. Dapat, we should not reject these things. So for 20 years, makita na to, the brothers of Joseph, they have no clear conscience. For the past 20 years, wala sila ka move on. Kay, na-remind mga good sila sa ilang, ilang gibuhat. Just imagine, 20 years is quite a long time to be living a life of heavy conscience. So I do not know if some of us here have heavy conscience, maybe the Lord is using this message to speak to you. Okay? Dili lame na guilty conscience. In fact, there was a time that I backslided. Okay? I turned away from God. Wala na ko tig basa Bible, dili ko tig pray. You know, do you know how God restores me? By sending me pain and suffering na sabi ko, dili na ko kaya. And then, muhadlo ko. And that is pala how God used it to bring me back to Him. How God restores us. And it depends on how you respond. Kasi, some people, because of this pain, maharden ang ilang kasing-kasing. Maharden ang ilang kasing-kasing. Lalong dili sila mo doon sa ginoo. Pero na yung mga, ta- na yung mga tao yun na once problems come in, you get reminded that maybe this is God's way of calling me back to Him. That is how God brings back a brother who has backslided. So if you are that person, you should not resist the Holy Spirit because the Lord is trying to restore you. Dapat dili mo mag- ay, wala na na parang just a coincidence just a coincidence when bad things happen 
we, we often evaluate. Namo ko'y sala, nga ano na ni. But take note that dili pa sabot na, na pag na nahitabo na ito na dili maayo, agi sa atong sala. Because it's also possible that dili, wala tayo sala, but God sends us this pain. Just like Job, wala may sala si Job, but God sends pain and suffering to him to test his character. Okay? But sometimes, God uses pain and suffering to remind us how far we've been away to God. The greatest tormentor of the human soul is a guilty conscience. A guilty conscience will torment us. I don't know kung naka-film naka, naka mo in your life, but I have. There, were, there was a point in my life that I was bothered by my guilty conscience that I cannot see myself going to church or reading the Bible. Do you know Sherlock Holmes? Okay, Arthur Doyle is the author of Sherlock Holmes. And then, um, gibinuangan niya yung mga amigo. So, nagpadala siya telegram to his 12 friends. And then these 12 friends of his are men of reputation, good virtue. And then, nagpadala siya ng telegram, nakabutang dito, ang message na, fly at once, all is discovered. Fly at once, all is discovered. And then within 24 hours, na dawat sa mga amigo, all of them left the country. Okay. So, ang pasabot di, Anna, all of them are hiding something. All of them are hiding something and then giingnan siya ng amigo niya, dagan mo, kay nasakpan na. So, nidagan sila. God sometimes send us problems and then it will make us realize, nga nung nahitabo maning, nahitabo, nga nung nahitabo maning, kung sa may problema. And then that's the time that you will reflect, na mo ko'y gibuhat na sayo, kaling laban sa kaling tao, nga nung gibuhat niya ni, or nabo ko'y buhat na sala sa ginoo. You know, remember that God can use pain to remind us if we have tried to silence our conscience. So there are two ways God calls our attention in case that we have um, silenced our conscience. First, di ba sabi ko, God makes us empty. Just like God sends famine to Joseph's brother, at the point na walang wala ka, that's the time that you will be that you will remember God. And secondly, God sends us pain to remind us if there are, are any unconfessed sins in our life. So those are the two ways God calls our attention in case we have unconfessed sins by bothering our conscience. If you look at the movies, di ba? people living in sin. Diba? People na go into extramarital affairs, into premarital affairs. Para ninyo, pag makita niyo mong sinihan, parang, parang normal ra. Pero, dili nyo lang ipakita na na ay guilt conscience. Even in Hollywood movies, makita niyo mo, uy, parang okay naman na mga gibuhat nila. But, dili ipakita na every time we do wrong, our conscience is bothering us. And that is how the world is teaching us. I, I am not, don't think about that. Don't forget about it. But in truth and in fact, God is using our conscience to tell us if what we're doing is right or wrong. In verse 24, kasi nagstoryahan na sila, pero nakasabot man di ay si Jose. And Joseph turned away and he began to weep and he came back. Siyempre, Joseph was reminded na nakita niya na nagmahay po diyang yung mga isoon. So, siyempre, na-call po siya, na-affect po siya. And then, ang yung gibuhat, he took Simeon, imprisoned Simeon, and then gipauli sila. And Joseph gave, gave orders to fill their bags with grain and put each man's sack of silver back and then gipa, gipauli na sila. Wala gibutang sa Bible nga, no, gipili si Simeon. But I think, Joseph is testing his brother. Diba sa una, remember Joseph, gibiyaan ng yang isoon? Karon, gisulayan ni Joseph kung biyaan ba nila si Simeon. Kaya kung, mga, kung wala pa nag-usab ang yang isoon, dili na nila balikan si Simeon. Just like gibuhat nila kay Jose, gibiyabandon niya. So for me, Joseph was testing his brothers. 
biyaan ba nila ang ilang isuon sa Simeon? Or dalon gun nila si Benjamin? So, ni, nilakaw na sila and then pagkagabi eh, one of them opened the sack and nabantayan niya, nakita niya ang silver. Sabi niya, oh, giuli ang akong gibayad. And then, sinihita mo niya, nangaluya silang tanan. Unsa kining gibuhat sa Diyos ka nato. Sometimes, when bad things happen to our lives, we will be reminded, why is God punishing me? And take that opportunity to reflect. Do you have any unconfessed sins that you need to confess? Kasi if not, sayang lang. No? You have to take advantage of that because that is God's way of talking to us. And in verse 29, so pag-abot nila sa Canaan, ilang gipahibulos ay ang amahan. Unsa'y nahitabo? Gi-recap nila unsa'y tanan mga nahitabo. Ang ingon nila, ang gusto ng tagdumala is dalon nato ang atong among youngest brother na si Benjamin. Aron mahibalo kung anes bata o dili bata spies. And then, ilang gibubo ang ilang ang sulod sa ilang sako and then nakitaan na po yung mga silver sa tanan nila. All of them, the money were back in their sack. And then, unsay tubag po ni, ni Jacob. Ingon siya, gusto ba gayod ninyo nga mawadan ko mga anak? Wala na si Jose, wala na si Simeon, o karon gusto na usab ninyo kuhaon si Benjamin. Puro na lang kasakit ang miabot kanako. Makita nato na wala pa nakaget over si Jacob. Moto, Jacob was very uh, restrictive of Benjamin. Wala niya gipa hawa si Benjamin. Parang gipalangga gid niya. Kasi si Benjamin, by the way, is the son of Rachel, yang yang paboritong asawa. Okay. Duha man yung, upat man yung asawa. So, si Rachel ang yang paboritong asawa and then si Benjamin ang anak sa yang paboritong asawa. Ruben tried to convince his father. Sabi niya, You may put my sons to death. Tay, isalig ka na ko si Benjamin. Pat siya ang duha ko kaanak ng lalaki kung dili ko siya madala pagbalik kanimo. Ano saman motive ni Ruben? I think Ruben was trying to win back his father's love. Remember, nakasala siya siyang amahan because he slept with Bilha, ang kabit sa iyang amahan. Ngayon na itabok nila. So, and then Ruben was the eldest. So, mauto gibuhat niya para ma-win back niya ang gugma sa ang amahan. Nisugot ba si Jacob? In si Jacob verse, verse 38, My son will not go down there with you. Wala siya nisugot. Dili ko musugot. Ang iyang iksuon patay na, siya na lang ang nah- nahibilin ka na ko. Kung may daotan nga may tabo ka niya sa inyong paglakaw, kamuon niya ang mahimong hinungdanan nga niining akong katigulangon mamatay ako sa Asubo. So, wala ni sugot si Jacob na ipadala si Benjamin sa Egypt kay mahadlok siya mawala si Benjamin. Okay, my question now is, did the brothers of Joseph repented? In this passage, wala nakita na nagrepent sila. Wala makita na nag, nag, ano, nagrepent sila. They just pretended that nothing happened. In fact, sa iyang mga sinutian kay Jacob, wala nila gipahibalo na wala naman namatay si Jose, gibaligyan nila. So, they kept secret the wrong that they have done to their brothers. So, we're done with the passage. So, now, with the application. Unsa kalahian ng remorse, regret, and repentance? Ang remorse ang pagmahay. Ang pagmahay or regret or remorse, lahi na siya sa repentance. Ang repentance, pag hinulsol. Ang regret, pagmahay. Usahay, pag nakahibot, nakahimot tawag dautan, magmahay ta, but that is not what God is looking from us. God wants us to repent. Ang gusto ng ginoo, mag, mag-hinulsulta. Lahi ang magmahay. Kasi ang magmahay, pwede man ta magmahay, pero mag-usab na po. Magmahay ko ng awat, sige lang, tas usab na po. Magmahay, mangawat na po, magmahay, mangawat na po, magmahay. But that is not what God wants. God expects us to repent. And kanin mga igsuon ni Jacob, ah, igsuon ni Jose, nagmahay sila, pero wala sila naghinulsol. The next question is, so unsa man dapat atong buhaton kung kita na ay guilty conscience? So wha- how should we respond to guilty conscience? There are two kinds of guilt. Okay, duha ka klaseng guilt. Ang first guilt is the called, what we call false guilt. What do you mean by false guilt? 
Ang false guilt, it is remorse and it will lead to bitterness. You know, Satan likes to tempt us to commit sin. E ngun si Satan, lami man mangawat, lami man to engage in premarital sex, or to or mga bit, lami, lami, go, 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 supportahan ti ka, satanas. Himuan na na, lami na, diligil ka magmahay. Pero once naghihimo na yung mga sala, Satan is no longer your friend. He will remind you, he will keep on reminding you the wrong that you have done. Satan will remind you, you don't deserve God's love. Christian ba ka? Nga no, gihimo man mo na? You don't deserve God's love because sige na lang, paulit-ulit na lang ni mo, gibuhat na siya. You don't deserve God's love anymore. God doesn't love you. So that is what we call false guilt. When you have not committed sin, Satan is friendly to you. Chami-chami. He will convince you to commit sin. But once you have committed sin, he will be there, accusing you day and night, bothering your conscience of the wrong that you have done. Sasabihin ka ni Satan, halak ka. You'll never get away with this. Masakpan din ka. Paulit-ulit na lang, mabalik sa imuhunahuna. You know, that is the work of the enemy. Because the Holy Spirit convicts us for the purpose of making us go back to Him. But Satan convict us for the purpose of putting us down. Satan is accusing us to make us feel hopeless and helpless. Look at Judas. Nakhimo siya og dautan? Naghinulsol ba siya? Of course, he had regret. He regretted his action. He regretted that he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Pero unsa miyang gibuhat? Nagpakamatay siya. Wala siya naghinulsol. Nagpakamatay siya. Agi sa iyang guilty conscience. Pero si Peter, unsa gibuhat ni Peter? Peter also betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus three times. But what was the reaction of Peter? How did he respond to his guilty conscience? Nag-surrender siya? Nilayo siya sa ginoo? Wala. Naghinulso siya. And the Lord restored him. Okay, so the second types of guilt is called true guilt. Ang true guilt is one that help you see sin in our life and one that leads us to repentance. Ang true conviction causes us brokenness. We will feel broken with our sin, but it will cause us to go back to God. So yun ang importante. Unsa imong response? If the Lord is convicting us of our sins, would we go back to Him? Or will we go away from Him? Nung nag-backslide ako, I keep on telling myself, I don't deserve God's love anymore. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. So, moto, maulaw na ko mo simbahan, maulaw na ko ana. But that should not be the case. Because that is the work of the enemy trying to keep you away from the Lord. Just like the prodigal son, at the time that he was at the bottom, at the time that walang wala na siya, giremind siya sa gugma sa iyang amahan. So dapat inana puta. And then if you know somebody who has backslided, maybe this does not apply to you, or maybe this applies to you, but if this does not apply to you, if you know somebody who has been away from the Lord, maybe you need to reach out. You reach out to them. Because worldly guilt, the guilt of the world makes us feel hopeless. Makes us feel hopeless na we're not good enough, we're bad, that we don't deserve God's love anymore. So in the end, so as believers, as children of God, we, ha- we can rest assured that the Lord loves us so much that bisan un sa atong gibuhat, pwede ta pasailuan. All we need to do is to go back to Him and ask for forgiveness. But is it enough to just, every time you do, do if every time you sin, anyway, pwede naman kung mga ipasailo, you know, one thing for sure, we cannot fool the Lord. The Lord knows our heart. Kablo siya kung tinudanay 
ang imong paghinonsol. Kasi there's a difference between asking for forgiveness and repentance. Ang repentance, it is saying, Lord, I have sinned. I do not want to sin anymore. Ang, ang forgiveness is, magsala ko, mga ko pasaylo, sala na po ko, mga pasaylo. That is not what the Lord wants. The Lord is looking for people who wants to repent. The Bible says that once we have Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. The old things pass away. The new things have come. That is why it's so easy to say that I am a Christian. And dapat makita ang prutas. Sabi ni John the Baptist, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. When you say that you repent, dapat makita sa atong kinabuhi. It doesn't mean that we will no longer sin. Yes, from time to time we will fall. But ang kalahian yun, pag nag ka, there is a progress. Example, kusog ka mag-curse, mag-say bad words. In a day, siguro mga 100 times. But pag nag ka, siguro in a day, siguro one or twice, and then you ask forgiveness. So there is a change. Pero kung paulit-ulit ni mong buhaton, parang there's no effort on your part. There's no sense of urgency to change that is not true repentance. True guilt brings us back to God. False guilt drives us away from God. And ang true guilt will lead us to repentance and restoration. So this is the challenge for this morning church. The brothers of Joseph were imprisoned by their guilt just as Joseph was imprisoned in Egypt. Pero ang imang isuon, wala naka-move on. For 20 years, their conscience kept bothering them. We don't like, I'm sure, dilita ganahan na we live in a life with heavy conscience. We want to have a life that gaan, di ba? And you know what? There is freedom in the Lord. All we need to do is to ask for forgiveness and repent. Eh? Dili lang Mga ipasaylo, utro na po. Kay dili na ito pwede, dili na ito mabinuangan ang ginoo. Na makita niya ang atong kasing-kasing. You know, true salvation, salvation is a result of repentance. Kasi ang ubang tao, yung sila, okay, I prayed the sinner's prayer, okay na yun. But it's not. Because, you know, di ba sabi ni Jesus, the gate, the, the narrow gate, and the wide gate. We have to go through the narrow gate. Maghinulsulta mag, mag sa atong mga binuhat. So that's how we should respond okay, to guilt and shame. It's only the Lord who can free us from sin. Okay, there's a story. Okay. Nay usaka hari ni adto siya sa prisuhan. So, pag priso ang daghan na kapriso. So, giusa-usa niya. Ikaw, sabi mo, sala. Mahal na hari, huwag mo ko'y sala. Ipasaninglan lang ko. Ipasaninglan ko na nakapatay. Pero wala mo, diliman ako to, lain tao. Okay, wala. So, next, prisoner. Nama, nga na nama ka dire. Ipasaninglan mo ko rape, pero wala mong gigo ko nag-rape. Ang bay mangod ni Duol na ako. So, wala ko'y mahimo. Consensual. Okay, okay. Ikaw, nga naman, naman ka dire. Mahal na hari, gipriso ko kayo nang, nangawat mong kunoko, pero wala mong nangawat. Look alike ko lang. Okay, so walay sala na pod. Ikaw, nga naman ka dire. Mahal na hari, tinuod na kapatay ko. Pero nagmahay ko, ha, mahal na hari, sa'yo pa akong gibuhat. Mauto na ako dire. Then, ingon ng hari, Guard! Kuhaan yung tao. Pagkausa siya. Nga no naman, nga no naman siya dire sa prisuhan na puro mga inosente man eh. So, dili siya angay dire. Pagkausa siya. The same is true with us. If we keep on saying, wala mo kay sala, then you don't, you don't need Jesus. You're just like the Pharisees. Okay naman ko. Wala mo kayo sala, perfect man ang kinabuhi. So, okay naman ko. 
But, you know, the Lord saves the person who will acknowledge that they are a sinner. A person who will truly repent. So, mungutana mo, how can we be saved? The first step is repentance. Ang repentance, by the way, ang repentance, dili pasabot na mga ipasailo. It's not enough. Ang repentance is metanoia, meaning you change your mind. You change your mind. For example, sa una, ano ka, uh, mahilig ka magmura, so dili na kaganahan magmura. Sa una, mahilig ka mag-inom, mahilig ka mag-drugs. You change your mind, dili na ka, nako, kay dili ni ka gusto na ginoo. You change your mind. It's not enough to ask for forgiveness and keep on repeating and repeating and repeating again. So, muundang ka. And then, pas, kaya ba yun? Pero dahil mo ta na, I have one person I knew, sabi na, pas, maglisod man ko kay, ano siya, um, palahubog siya. Di man ko kaya. Kay, kung di ko kainom, diligid ko. Kay, every day, mo inom gid siya. Dili na ako kaya. You know, ay yun na ako niya. If you rely on your strength, dili gud ni mo kaya. Ayaw pag rely sa imong strength. Dapat every day, you have to walk in the Lord. Sa pasabot, Ana, you have to repent. You have to renew your mind. You have to ask God to take control of your life. That is why it's important na you have to pray always and to read the Bible always, kay every time na tintalon ka ng imong barkada, tara, inom ta. Huwag gunahuna ko ni mo, dili ko. Kay I am a new creation. And then, ampo ka na, Lord, di na ko kaya, tabangi ko na ma-overcome ang temptation. That is what uh, my pastor told us before. Siya, hili kayo siya mag-yosi. Pagkahuman, pikas na po. So, Sige siya mag yosi That's why sabi na, hindi na kaya. So that's why, every day, he asked the Lord for help. Every day, pag mata niya, tabangin ko, Lord, na dili ko manigarilyo. Di na ako kaya. And then, every day, gibuhat niya, magbasa sa Biblia, tabangin ko, ginoo, pasailo ako, tabangin ko. You know what? Every day, he lives by grace. One day, wala siya na nigarilyo. Next day, wala. Wala, wala. And pagkadugahayan, pila katuig na, wala na siya ni balik na ni Garillo. Dili agi sa kaya niya, but because of the Lord. So I think that is how we should repent. We have to realize that on our own, dili na to kaya. We have to ask the Lord. That's why you have to go back to the Lord. Ang ingon ni Satanas, if you did something wrong, don't go to God. Dapat maulaw ka sa ginoo. Ayaw, ampo, ayaw, ana. That is what Satan want. That we will go away from the Lord. Because that is not true repentance. But true repentance will bring us closer to God. Because it is only the time that we are close to God that we are able to stop sinning. Sabi Jesus, if you abide in me, you will produce fruit. Because apart from me, you can do, you can do nothing. So don't t- tell yourself na sige, di na ako mag-inom, di na ako uh, di na ako padayon ang, ang for example, if you are in a bad relationship, extramarital affairs, di na ako magpadayon. You know, if you rely on your strength, this hood, because temptation will come and Satan will tempt you and lead you to commit sin. That is why you need to have the Lord in your life. Realize that you cannot do it on your own. So the question, the challenge for this morning is, do you have any unresolved sins in your life? Namba mo mga sala na hantudron parang wala pa ninyo gikumpisal sa ginoo. Are you being bothered by your conscience? If you're being bothered by your conscience, it is God's way of speaking to you. And the question is, how should we respond? How should we respond? We should respond in repentance. So remember, worldly sorrows leads to death, but godly sorrows leads to repentance. 
this is a reminder. Just look at the life of Joseph's brother, Lisod Bia. If you're living with guilt, Lisod Gayo. You ask the Lord to free us. So there is freedom. You know, the Bible in 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us. Because that is what the Bible says. It's not how you feel. Listen, if you, if you don't feel it, it's okay. You don't have to feel forgiven. You have to know that the Lord says that you are forgiven, then you are forgiven. Ang importante, you have to repent. Maghinusol. Mag-usap. 